Wall Street, I think, has it completely wrong in looking at today's inflation data, or at least the government's version of inflation, and thinking that this means that you know, the new bull market in stocks is here because the Fed is done hiking and the fact the Fed is going to start cutting. And who knows, we may even get back down to zero. Uh, that might be the hope that springs eternal uh, for the market. But it's wrong to conclude anything from these numbers. Certainly that the Fed is winning the war on inflation. That is a war that it cannot win. After a recent period of fluctuation, inflation decisively resumed its decline in October. Consumer prices eased more than anticipated, with decreases in gasoline and used car prices offsetting rent and health insurance cost increases. Peter Schiff contends that Wall Street's interpretation of the inflation data is fundamentally flawed. According to Schiff, the belief that the Federal Reserve is succeeding in the battle against inflation is a misguided perspective. Excluding volatile food and energy prices, the core CPI rose by 0.2% falling short of the forecast at 0.3% and reached an annual level of 4%, slightly below the predicted 4.1%. This marks the lowest annual level in two years, down from 4.1% in September, but still above the Federal Reserve's 2% target. In response to the subdued inflation report, U.S. stocks experienced a significant rally on Tuesday. The Nasdaq Composite recorded its most substantial daily percentage point increase since April. The S&P 500 surged by 84.15 points, or 1.9%, closing at 4,095.70, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average gained 489.83 points, or 1.4%, concluding at 34,127.70. The Russell 2000, tracking small cap stocks, saw a notable increase of 92.82 points, or 5.4%, settling at 1,198.32, marking its most substantial daily advance since November 2022, according to FactSet data. Peter Schiff attributes the celebratory market mood to the October CPI figures, which exceeded expectations and indicated lower inflation, a positive development according to market sentiment. Now, let's turn our attention to a video. Before we delve in, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. The catalyst for this party, what got the party going, was the release of the CPI number for October. And the number came out better than expected, meaning lower, right? Lower inflation is, is, is good news, right? So it was a beat, but just barely. So the consensus forecast was for a rise of 0.1. That's what everybody was expecting. Now, maybe there were some people that thought maybe it would be higher than that, but the official consensus was 0.1. The range was from unchanged to 0.2. Not even a big range of opinion. Everybody was pretty sure it would come out between zero and, and 0.2. And so we came out at zero, the low end of the consensus range. But the markets are celebrating that, that prices were unchanged instead of rising by one-tenth of 1%. One I mean, it's one month, who cares? And it's a government index, so it's meaningless anyway. Now, it was an improvement over the prior month where prices were up 0.4, but that was a pretty big month, uh, the up 0.4. Now, the year-over-year -year number was supposed to come out at plus 3.3. And it came out at plus 3.2. Again, big deal. It's barely below consensus. It's hardly a reason to celebrate. The um, consensus forecast was for a range of 3.2 to 3.4. That's a narrow range and we hit the lower end of the narrow range. We didn't go below it. Uh, but still, Wall Street reacted to this as if it was this great piece of news, and it sparked an immediate rally. And then, you know, the momentum built across the board uh, on all these rallies. Now, if you X out food and energy and look at the so-called core, there, again, another beat. The expectation was for up 0.3, and we rose 0.2, but again, the consensus range was up 0.2 to up 0.3. I mean, not a big range, and we hit the low number, 
it was either going to be 0.2 or 0.3. We got 0.2. Big deal. And the year-over-year -year core, excluding food and energy, was supposed to be 4.1, and we got 4.0. Again, big deal. And I didn't even delve into the numbers because they round everything. So I doubt the actual difference was a full tenth of a percent because you know everything ends up gets rounded. So who knows? It's probably even smaller a difference than that. But again, the range of estimates was 4% to 4.1. But as a result of this number, which is almost exactly what everybody thought it was going to be, the expectations for rate hikes have plunged. And the expectations for 2024 rate cuts have, have, have moved up quite a bit. So as a result of this supposedly great news on inflation, the markets believe the Fed is pretty much done. That the war against inflation has been won, the Fed has been victorious, and now it can start you know, taking its troops off the battlefields by, by cutting rates. That's what the markets are now uh, convinced of, and that's why you got this, this big rally. But the markets are completely wrong. Right? This means nothing. And first of all, you still got year-over-year -year core at four. That's double two. And nothing in these numbers suggests that we're headed to two. Just because we're at four now, it doesn't mean we're going to two. We could just as easily double and go back up to eight. There's no reason to just conclude that that's where we're headed. But even at four, we're still way above uh, the Fed's target of, of 2%. The dollar, which had been on a solid upward trend this year due to rising treasury yields, experienced a reversal on Tuesday. It lost ground against nearly all major currencies as traders factored in expectations of a Federal Reserve rate cut of approximately half a percentage point by July. According to Peter Schiff, this decline is linked to the market's belief in the Federal Reserve's success in combating inflation. Ironically, this perception has decreased market interest in holding onto dollars. The current status of the U.S. dollar index reflects a bearish trend, with its daily price at 104,663, positioned below the 50-day moving average of 105.866. This indicates a short-term downward trajectory. Now, let's turn our attention to a video. What happened to the dollar today? The dollar got killed today. Why did it get killed? Because the markets think the Fed is winning the inflation war. And so, paradoxically, they don't want dollars. See, the paradox is they wanted dollars when inflation was a problem and the Fed was fighting it. That's when they should have wanted to get rid of dollars. Because by definition, inflation means the dollar is losing its purchasing power. So why would you want to buy something that's losing its purchasing power? That is, you know, the, the irony of the foreign exchange market. That's how they work now. It doesn't matter about the dollar's purchasing power. What matters is the direction of interest rates or real rates or the rates in the U.S. versus the rates someplace else. It was all a function of rates. That's how the, the traders had programmed, you know, the algorithms. And so as the Fed was fighting inflation, the dollar was going up. But it was the strength of the dollar that was actually doing the Fed's work because it was the strong dollar that brought down commodity prices, that brought down oil prices. That's what brought down the headline CPI. So the gains that have been made with respect to measuring inflation have been because of the strong dollar. But here's the problem. The minute the Fed claims victory, or even the markets think that the Fed is winning, even before the Fed actually declares mission accomplished, the, the, the markets start trading down the dollar. The dollar starts to fall. And as long as the markets think the Fed is winning, the dollar will keep falling. It was when they thought the Fed was losing that they wanted to buy dollars because that meant the Fed was going to fight harder and have to raise rates. But if the fight is over and the Fed has won, well, then there's no more rate hikes. And the next thing that's going to happen, if the Fed's not hiking, well, then they're going to cut. And then the dollar is going to get killed. And in fact, if the Fed ever came out, and ratified what the markets are thinking and actually said mission accomplished, you know, we're done, we now have a bias towards easing, the dollar is going to fall through the floor. The irony of that is now commodity prices are going to take off. 
on the back of a weak dollar. And so now all of the progress that the Fed made that led it to believe it won the inflation war is going to be lost. And it's going to be obvious that maybe they won a small battle, but inflation ends up winning the war. Because the minute you know, the Fed is winning, they lose because then the dollar goes down because there is no way to win this war because the minute they stop fighting, right, inflation strengthens. So in order to keep the inflation forces at bay, if they can, they can never let up. They have to keep on hiking rates, but the markets haven't figured that out. Of course, they can't do that because if they do that, then we have a financial crisis like the one that began in March. The banks start to fall, fail. Uh, we have other things blowing up and breaking. And now the Fed is forced back into quantitative easing, just like it was in March. Only the next time they go back to the QE well, it's going to be for an even uh, larger help of the water. And, and, and so there you get more inflation. So no matter what they do, uh, it, they end up losing the war. But the other thing that you know the investors still don't seem to get is that it's been about 15 years since 2008, that the Fed has been aggressively creating inflation. That's been their policy goal. In fact, that's been the policy goal of all the major central banks. In fact, in Japan, that's still their goal. The, the, the fools in Japan are still trying to create inflation. At least in the U.S. and the Eurozone, we, we, we've claimed we've had enough, right? We, okay, we, you know, we definitely won the war against low inflation, and now we're fighting high inflation. The stagnant headline CPI figure resulted from a 2.5% drop in energy prices, counteracting a 0.3% uptick in the food index. The sluggish price growth may indicate an economic slowdown, possibly foreshadowing a recession in the coming year. Following tepid inflation data, the U.S. dollar experienced its most significant decline in a year, as traders increased their expectations that the Federal Reserve would commence interest rate cuts by mid-2024. That concludes our conversation for today. What are your expectations for Federal Reserve actions in response to the inflation data, and how might this influence financial markets? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you found this content informative, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for the latest updates. Thank you for being here with us.